Okay, this video is going to cover two things, but this one here just slightly because all we see happening in Canada is the exact same thing we saw years ago when they first legalized homosexuality and all this other stuff. They got to start it internationally. They got to start it somewhere first. And um, certain nations can't allow it to happen there first because of, uh, you know, political problems in in that respect and especially rome when it comes to how they're going to do everything they can like the pharisees of old did to try to prevent free speech because there's just way too many people today now that know that the pope is the man of sin and so they're going to do everything they can to prevent free speech on that topic alone but they can't just go out and say oh look you can't speak about the popes in rome and their obvious sinfulness and the fact that prophecy points to them as the man of sin the beast the antichrist whatever they can't just go out and say that that would be an illegal or criminal act because uh, they would just be the laughing stock of the world. So it has to start someplace else first, and that, of course, being Islam. And that's why you see what's happening in Canada. Canada did the homosexuality thing first, then it went to America. They did it next with the Philadelphia 11, and it just went all around the nation, and it was legalized, of course, and now it's going global. Well, they're doing the same thing here with Islamophobia because the Vatican knows that loud cry is coming and they're going to do everything they can to try to prevent the people from finding out uh, that don't read Bibles, that every prophecy that's ever been uttered in the scriptures in regards to Antichrist have been proven to have been fulfilled by the Roman Catholic popes. Every single one of them, not just a few of them, all of them. And then this leads me to the second part of this video as to why I'm posting it. Check this out. The Pope actually gives priests power to forgive abortions. Check out what he says here. Scroll down a little bit here. It says, uh, where is it? Oh, here. It says, I henceforth grant to all priests in virtue of their ministry the faculty to absolve those who have committed the sin of procured abortion. Okay, so let me go to a page on my website where I have 26 of my favorite prophecies, and there's a lot more than 26, but these are the ones that... Uh, make it so painfully easy to show who the man of sin is or the Antichrist or whatever. Well, let's go to number nine. Number nine is uh, talking about how the Antichrist will blaspheme. All right, so let's go there. And the Bible verse that says this is in Revelation 13, verse 1. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, I cover all these other symbols on this page, of course. You know, the beast, the seven heads, the horns, and all that stuff. But how do you define blasphemy? But in order to do that, let's because of what the Pope just said, let's scroll down a little bit for the second definition of blasphemy. And here it is. Mark chapter 2, verse 7 states, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And then the other part of uh, identifying the um, Antichrist is the other definition of blasphemy, which is found in John chapter 10, verse 33 where the Jews were getting in Jesus' face, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for a blasphemy. And because thou being a man, makest thyself God, right? So there's two definitions here. If a man stands on earth and declares himself God, he's blaspheming. And if that same man also declares that he can forgive sins and even give power unto others to forgive sins, that's also blasphemy. Both prophecies regarding blasphemy are fulfilled in the Pope. Because check out these quotes here that I have on the screen. I got a lot more on my Words of a Beast page if you just go there. But these are just some of my favorites here where it says, We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. That's the Pope talking back in 1894. And then he also says, uh, "For thou," uh, and these are people talking to the Pope. They call the Pope the shepherd, the physician, the director, the husbandman, and, and thou art another God on earth. I mean, it just if you just go through this list, your, your jaw is going to drop. But this, see, this is not known, though, by many. I mean, I was Catholic 29 years. I never knew any of this stuff. And so this is why I put it out there. But here's the key for today. The Pope just made it painfully easy for all of us to declare him Antichrist by declaring he's giving power onto his priests to forgive sin. And I'm not saying that these girls that committed the sin of murder by aborting their children can never be forgiven. No, I'm not saying that. They can be forgiven. Jesus Christ can forgive you for anything outside, of course, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And so... They ask for forgiveness from the Lord, and, and, if it, and if they have a contrite heart and they're really sincere, yeah, they're forgiven, hands down. You don't have to go to a man to get your sins forgiven. That's just another way of the Pope and you know the powers that be look for ways to control the people, and that's just one of them. But check it out. This has been known for eons about Roman Catholicism, where they have confessionals in all their churches. 
look at some of these. Look at the encyclopedia of the, uh, the Catholic Encyclopedia, volume 12. On page 265, it says, the judicial authority of the priests and the pope will even include the power to forgive sins. Every prophecy that's ever been uttered in Scripture that speaks of Antichrist have been fulfilled by the popes of Rome. Thank you for watching. God bless.